Hey everyone, welcome back. I'll get right into this video, but first, really quick, I wanna tell you about a friend of mine that I met way back in 2005 in a Battlefield 2 tournament that we both played in called BF2 Combat. We live in different states, so most of our interaction has been over Discord or gaming, but he and another one of our teammates actually came out to my wedding. So I consider him to be a good friend. Well, yesterday I got some really bad news that his wife had passed away, leaving him and their two kids. I know that none of you know him, but he's a friend of mine, and I know that many of you are very kind and generous people. They need some help with things like funeral expenses, so I'm gonna drop a link in my description and pinned comment with a link to their GoFundMe. Every little bit helps and they need ours now. Thank you. So last week, CNN's Oliver Darcy tweets out that senior White House and admin officials have been holding briefings with major newsrooms over the past week as they try to reshape economic coverage. Can you even imagine such a thing happening during Trump or even the Bush administration? No way. They'd have tens of thousands of people marching in the streets with code pink and the ACLU blasting any news that capitulated to such an authoritarian power grab. But of course, we're talking about Democrat media, so they just tell themselves that they're saving democracy and dutifully agree to be even bigger shills than they already were. Just a week after Biden's demand, CNN goes from actually reporting on high gas prices, which the Media Research Center found that CNN reported on only nine times and it was 77% negative, to 43 mentions that were 79% positive. Here at home, Americans are finally Finally getting some relief, finally, right? Good news, people. We talk so much about bad news. Oh my gosh, inflation. Blah, blah, blah. This is good news. Gas prices are heading south, down. Government forecast forecast says that they could drop below three dollars a gallon. Whew. Finally, some economic relief, however minor. Americans are paying a little less at the pump after weeks of rising energy prices. Relief for the United States as energy costs drop. That pain that you've been feeling at the pump, it may be short-lived. There is finally some relief at the pump. Good news at the pump. Finally getting some relief, as you mentioned. The national average price of gas dropped four cents in the last week. Gas dropped nearly a nickel in the last week. It's a seven-week low. It's moving in the right direction. The average is now at a seven-week low. Actually, a seven-week low. Slightly lower gas prices, so that's good news. Yeah, this is the kind of positive news we've wanted. Yeah, really good economic news, including dropping gas prices. Gas prices will tumble below $3 a gallon soon. So that's good news. person familiar with the White House's thinking told me today that lower prices at the pump are good news. And, and I do think we have to note that gas prices and natural gas, for example, going way down. There are plenty of signs that the U.S. economy is strong. This economy moving in the right direction. It's not perfect. There are inflation concerns here, but there are a lot of things to be very, very grateful for as we head into the Christmas season. As usual, you can't take what CNN says at face value. Their claims of lowered gas prices are based on the U.S. Energy Information Administration, which recently claimed that gas nationwide had dropped about five cents between November and December. What they don't tell you is that gas went up 61% over the previous year, making November's average price of 3.39 per gallon the highest since 2014. Hmm, 2014, that means Barack Obama was president. I noticed some folks clapped, but I know some of these big guys, they're all still driving their big SUVs, you know, they got their big monster trucks and everything. You're one of them? Well, now, here's my point. You know, if, if you're complaining about the price of gas and you're only getting eight miles a gallon, well, I, I, you may have a big family, but it's probably not that big. How many you have? Ten kids, you say? Well, you definitely need a hybrid van then. Under my plan uh, of a cap and trade system, electricity rates would necessarily skyrocket. Your critics will say on Capitol Hill that you want gas prices to go higher because you have said before that will wean the American people off fossil fuels onto renewable fuels. What I have also said about gas prices is that there is no silver bullet and the only way we're going to solve this problem over the medium and long term is with an all of the above strategy. Strangely, even though Obama and his energy secretary admitted that they wanted high gas prices, the media avoided blaming the scandal-free president. In fact, their reporting was very similar to what I just showed you. And of course, it was a complete 180 from the way they had been reporting on high gas prices under the oil man, George Bush. People who are losing patience with gas prices at $3 a gallon. What we are seeing is, you know, a, a government run for the oil company. Drivers are paying a heavy price 
for the Bush administration's failure to enact a comprehensive energy strategy. This Congress, under the Democratic leadership, is working to make up for years of inaction, taking America in a new direction that helps bring down the cost of gas. Gas prices have more than doubled since George Bush became our president. People are blaming oil companies for these high prices, but in what could be an ominous sign for Republicans, a number of people we spoke to are blaming President Bush. With the Bush administration under pressure to curb rising gas prices, the political pressure is rising about as fast as the price of gas. So the president gives a major energy speech today. Spiking gas prices from coast to coast have created new political pain for an administration already falling in the polls. You wouldn't think high gas and oil prices would be a blessing in disguise, but they are. As Victor Lopez found out, they're causing a big jump in the number of jobs. We turn now to five things you should know about gas, specifically why gas prices, even at over $4 a gallon, can sometimes be a good thing. And we know that rising gas prices are forcing us to search for alternative fuels and more fuel-efficient cars. There are some other reasons to be optimistic about the high cost of gas. Here are just a few of them. 2,220 people have already been saved over the past year because a reduction in driving has led to less particle pollution in the air. If gas prices stay uh, at $4 a gallon for a year or more, then we can expect that about 1,000 people a month will not die. So could these so high prices help us? I think that I would have preferred a gradual adjustment. All right, folks, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button and leave me a comment. And if you're able to, please check out my friend's GoFundMe page. I'll leave a link in the description or pinned comment. Thank you.